So welcome along to another Isolation Interviews and uh, I'm very excited that on the show today we are joined by the amazingly talented Nina Wadia. Thank you so much Nina for joining me. No worries, thank you for the introduction. <laughs> now life at the moment is very strange. I mean how are you finding this whole lockdown isolation situation? How are you finding it? Uh, it would, you know, I was, I was getting along fine with it and then uh, it extended um, and that's when it started to get a bit hard. Um, I, I, I'm one of these people, I'm very sociable, so I suddenly found that towards the end of the lockdown and still the situation that we're in, I found myself struggling a little bit um, mentally. I just, I, I, to keep focused and to keep positive and to look forward to things starting again and enjoying life again, I found that tough. Um, so, uh, but otherwise, you know, just because of the kids and having to kind of prop myself up for them, that's kept me going. I mean, that's the thing is everyone's really having to work on looking after themselves because at the, at the moment, you know, mental health is so important. People have to, you know, keep themselves busy and occupied because otherwise you're just going to sit there feeling you know, bad for yourself. So, I mean, what, what sort of things have kept you, um, you know, kept you, you know, positive and, and motivated? Um, well, I, my, my 16 year old daughter makes me exercise with her every day. So, um, that keeps me motivated. I get shouted at if I don't. So <laughs> we do an hour of, um, uh, bits of Pilates and sort of weight training and even going for like mini runs because I can only manage a mini run. <laughs> um, and my, my son is an absolute clown. So he just keeps the house amused and laughing. And, um, and I'm thinking, cause I'm so creatively bored. I'm thinking of, um, doing a little um, set of horror kind of one minute films on Instagram in the next couple of weeks. I just want to just, just entertain. So, yeah. I mean, with, with things like social media, obviously Twitter, Facebook, everyone's able to kind of keep in contact and like, you know, zoom and everything. Have you found that you've connected with people more through this all happening? Oh, entirely. And in fact, one of the best things just before I spoke to you, I had a zoom call with all my old school friends from Hong Kong, people I haven't seen since we were, anywhere between 11 and 15. Um, and it, it was incredible. That, that just absolutely made my year. I, I was talking to friends that I haven't spoken to. Some were in New Zealand, some in LA, some, you know, here in London. It's just, it, it, that was so special. And we all, we all were in the same situation. Um, so yeah, very, very special. And I think this wouldn't have happened without it. And you know, even just sitting and writing again, I haven't, sat down to write something in so long so that's that's been something that's been keeping me going as well because obviously at the moment for a lot of people in the in the you know entertainment industry life has kind of stopped i mean for you have you been able to keep working have you have you been able to still work on things or has it sort of more or less sort of stopped well um i was working on the offenders it's Stephen merchant's new show in bristol and they basically stopped filming that end of march um, hoping to pick it back up at, you know, at the end of this year. Uh, so I was very sad because I was really loving that job. Um, and then I got a call, um, someone at ITV saying they're doing something called isolation stories. Um, and there's a story with Sheridan Smith and would I play her colleague on it? And so I have had bits and pieces, you know, um, which has been something to look forward to. And I've done lots of podcasts and, um, and lots of sort of helping friends out with putting their stuff together for commissioners in September and October. So creatively I've had to have those things. And but the, the thing that I've done the most and I've actually had time to do the most is to help out with charities that mean a lot to me um, because I can do that easily on social media. So making videos about, you know, um, JD, for JDRF, the Juvenile um, Diabetes Research Fund for Diabetes UK, um, you know, the, the fact that domestic violence, um, especially within the Asian community, has risen greatly during this time. I made a video, you know, for, on behalf of the government to say that there is still help out there for them. So socially, it's allowed me to do that. You know, thanking the NHS, helping the British Asian community to look after themselves, you know, not socialize. There's, there's been so many things that I feel like I need to do or I have to do. And of course, now with what's happened very recently with the Black Lives Matter, that's so disheartening and so upsetting that you just go, really, with all the things going on in the world, this is what you want to do now? <laughs> you know, it's just, 
the world just needs to be kinder to each other. Everyone just needs to look after each other much, much more than we've been doing. And this is, this is a wake up call for us as human beings. It's a wake up call. And it must be nice for you because you obviously have the platform to be able to speak to people and to, yeah. to get the message out there. So you can really do your bit. Yeah, very much so. Very much so. And you know, there's, there's even these small little companies that I've, I, to be honest, I joined Instagram much later than anything else. I, I didn't even want to be on social media. I joined Twitter years ago when I'd made the decision to leave EastEnders and I wanted people to know it was my decision. Um, and so I joined Twitter just so that there was no doubt about what was happening or why I left or I could answer questions for myself. Um, and then Twitter just sort of suddenly took off. It did it like, uh, so um, then my friends were like, well, why aren't you on Instagram? And I'm going, I, I don't really use social media for more than either charity stuff or promoting something I'm going to be doing next. So I don't, I'm not the type of person who goes, look what I saw. Here's a leaf. Isn't it pretty? I'm just not that type of person. <laughs> so, but you know, since joining Instagram, actually it's, it's been nice because I've been approached by people who wouldn't be able to approach me um, from smaller companies saying, can you try our product and be honest, if you like it, can you just say you like it? And if that helps them in any way, why not? So yeah, social media is kind of, it, it's been an, something that I've, I have a love hate relationship with. I don't like it for the every day, but I like it if it helps. That's the amazing thing with social media is it can have the ups and the downs. I mean, obviously it's, <laughs> it's, it's a great way of bringing people together, making people, um, you know, connecting people, but at the same time, yes. it does have the vile side where there's all the trolling and the bullying, which is, you know, just disgusting to, to see. Yes. Um, yeah. But I, I like to think that on the most part, the most the, the, the majority of humanity are a good people and, and, and we, yeah. we, we, we all want to work together and help each other. Yes. I mean, and, and the, the thing about this virus is it has brought that side out. You know, I walk down my street and the signs that I see in the windows, you know, for the, the love for the NHS, the love for anybody in, you know, just a, a key worker job. Um, it just brings a smile to your face and you just think actually people do care. We do appreciate that someone comes and clears our bins once a week. What do we do without that? We do appreciate that if we fall sick, that there are people putting their lives on the line just to look after people they don't even know, you know, and that, those are the real heroes. Those are the real celebrities, you know, and this has made people realize that. And I think that's the thing is, although not necessarily everyone would admit it, I do think we have taken them for granted. Um, and I think yeah. this has been a way with the clapping and all of that, that we really are showing them that actually, you know, we may be, you know, forgot about you a little bit but no we, you're back in our minds we're, we're not forgetting yeah it's it's it, it has like I said it's been a it's been a wake-up call for that it's brought people together as well I mean there's neighbors down my road who I've seen and I see and we smile at each other if we take the dog for a walk on the river you know that kind of thing we we know each other but we don't know each other and recently because we've you know we're when we were allowed out once a day for our exercise and I'd go for a walk along the river I'd see um, people and we'd actually stand across from each other and exchange a few words and you go oh wow <laughs> you know like <laughs> I've never known your name I didn't know you had five kids I didn't know you know that you've lived here since 1932 it's just it's been great and and the care the care for people you know just checking on neighbors are you okay do you need something when there was no flour I remember one of my neighbors was like oh I haven't had a cake in so long and <laughs> I went on the hunt for flour I couldn't find it and then I, um, one of my friends out in Hong Kong, she Zoomed me and she said, listen, can you get um, oat, uh, you know, like just a bags of oat, a bran, you know, even if you just use porridge oats. I said, yeah, I have porridge oats. She goes, whisk it, just whisk it down, break it down to really fine flour and you can make muffins with it. I mean, they don't taste the same, but they, <laughs> this, they was, I put loads of bananas and I just made a bunch of banana muffins and it was brilliant. You know, you just go, oh, this is inventive. <laughs> and you do, you do come up with things and, I'll tell you the one thing I've absolutely realized. I don't ever need to go shopping like for, <laughs> for anything like clothes or hair or makeup. I just, I haven't missed that. I thought I'd missed that. And actually, I haven't missed that at all. I've, what, I've, what I hate doing now is going to the supermarket because it takes seven hours to do a shop. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but oh God, Matthew, I, I basically, I shop for like two weeks at a time because I don't <laughs> want to go back out there. 
So yeah, we, uh, we, we, we've got to the point where we're now trying to do as little. I mean, my mum works in a supermarket, so I'm quite lucky right. that we're that she's obviously able to do shopping uh, after yeah. she's finished. Um, but yeah, it, it does completely change your life. I mean, I've started giving myself haircuts, which was something I never thought I'd do. Oh, um, <laughs> and that was very scary. I think the first time I spent about an hour and a half in the bathroom, which, you know, yeah. probably shouldn't have taken that long. But you just you end up adapting and you, you just you make these changes um, just to kind of, you know, get by because you want to keep yeah. yourself feeling good as well of course you do of course you do it's just it's um you know you there, I, I, I the one thing i've noticed is if i ever have to do something on zoom that's professional you know i i wake up in the morning and go yes i get to kind of look halfway near decent today <laughs> you know just and then i try and keep it on the whole day just to feel good but the rest of the time you know i'm, I, I'm not someone who wears a lot of makeup or anything outside of work anyway so for me, that didn't change much. And being an actor, you know, people, a lot of friends who aren't actors were like, oh my God, I've got to spend the whole day with the kids. What am I going to do? And I'm thinking, I do that all the time when I'm out of work anyway. And I love it. <laughs> I love spending time with my kids. I'm going to, you know, my 16 year old and 13 year old now, they're, they're going to leave home soon and I will miss them. You know, I will really miss them. But I'm, I'm the one negative writer. I'm so overly emotional for no apparent reason. I mean, so we watched Billy Elliot last night, which I haven't seen in years. And my kids have never seen it. I cried from the beginning to the end. And it's a happy movie. And I mean, this is so special. This is so... Isn't Jamie Bell amazing? I think, like, what is wrong with me? And then, of course, you go, oh, my God, am I menopausal? I don't know what's going on. And you analyze everything right now, like, any symptom I have on my ear hurts, I Google it. Oh, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the very, <laughs> I think that's the very dangerous thing is you can, even when you're well, you can start to think, Oh, maybe I'm getting something and, and you sort of panic for no reason. It's sort of, yeah, I think it's, it, it's, yeah, it's because you, you see so many people who are obviously going through such, you know, tough times and you start to think, Oh yeah. no, not me, not me, not me, please. No, I, know, I know. I know. Every, every sniffle, everything. Are you okay? What's happened? Let me take your temperature. <laughs> you know, like that. Though on 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 that on that note as well, this, the you know we've we've lost three very very dear friends um, in this time, and the first friend that passed away, it it made it sort of come home that this is real, this is real, this is not a joke, um, you know, and that's why you know with the lockdown easing as soon as it is, I'm nervous, I'm scared because the numbers aren't quite right yet. Um, and then when you've lost people, you know, you just go, oh, wow. So two of them, well, one was in their 70s, one was in their 80s, but one was 53. And she was a friend of mine, a mum. And it, that really hit home um, that, you know, stay, just stay home. Just don't go out, you know, and look after yourself. And this, this thing is so random. It just takes the most random people. Um, so, yeah. It, it, it was a wake-up call. Now, the last time we spoke, um, you actually told me something after we'd finished um, recording, which I was quite excited about, but was top secret at the time, which was, of course, right. you were about to go into Death in Paradise. That's right, what, yes. What, what was that like to film? Because it looked like you had an amazing time on the show, and it's a beautiful location. So tell us a bit about that. You know, it was an absolute blessing to have had that job before lockdown. I think if I hadn't had that job, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if I hadn't had that job, I'll should I start again. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. We'll, we'll continue. <laughs> okay. Um, if I hadn't had Death in Paradise before lockdown, I think I would be going absolutely insane right now. Um, and the reason is it was such a beautiful thing to look at, <laughs> you know, and be part of. Firstly, you know, you, they, they literally say that the, you know, the fifth main character of Death in Paradise is the location. And it is. Um, I took my breath away. And when I landed there, funnily enough, I had two scenes initially of day one, day two after I landed. And then I had five days off straight. Oh, nice. So it was just <laughs> absolute heaven for me. Um, and working with Don Warrington, working with Ardell O'Hanlon, uh, I, I mean, just, it was... A no brainer. I was going to have a good time. You know, they, they're good drinkers. <laughs> we like the odd rum. <laughs> um, and one of the nicest feelings is going filming at lunchtime. You can jump in the sea <laughs> and straight after work, you can jump in the sea. <laughs> um, 
a bit hard to do at Elstree, I've got to say. So it, it was just nice to, to have a job where you go, am I actually getting paid to do this? <laughs> um, is this a joke? Is someone going to pinch me in a minute and it's all going to disappear and I'm going to be back home? <laughs> <Yeah, he throw. laughs> so it just, it, 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 was, it was one of those jobs where there, it's, it's comedy and drama. So it was nice. It kind of, it kind of felt a bit more like home for me. I love jobs where it's got both things in it, you know, and that's why I loved EastEnders for as many years as I did it. You know, she, it was just fun. Uh, she was a great fun character, but she also got to experience and do the drama side of things. And I got to do that with this, you know, and Ardell and myself are so awkward in real life <laughs> anyway, when it comes to any lovey-dovey stuff that it was just, we said, well, let's just play them awkward because that would be real. Um, and so we did, you know, and we had a subplot going, which I love telling people about, but the subplot was that Anna, the character I played, was actually a serial killer. <laughs> and <laughs> she was trying to kill him. <laughs> and that story kept us going throughout the whole thing as we filmed it. Um, and it was great. And it made, it made you forget about the heat because it is hard filming out there in, in the heat. It just, I know it sounds like a first world excuse, but <laughs> really eight hours in 40 degree heat with big movie lights on you. Um, I'm surprised I didn't look like I had a shower in every scene. <laughs> so how long were you actually out there for filming? Oh, well, I actually, because I was in four episodes, I went up for two episodes first. So I was there for about four and a half weeks. Then I came, they let me go back home because there was a hiatus of some kind. Um, so I got to come back home for two weeks and then go back out there for <laughs> four weeks. But this time, knowing lots of stuff that I could, you know, uh, take out there and have fun with and enjoy and just, you know, have, have a really, really good time because it's one of those shows that actors jump up and down at. And strangely, actually, I know that, um, so Sunetra uh, Isaka is a very good friend of mine and um, there was an episode, I think, that she did out there years ago and I was meant to be in that episode with her, but I was doing uh, Holby City or something at the time, so I couldn't do it. So I was in a way really, really glad that that didn't um, happen for me because if that happened, I wouldn't have had this role when Ardell joined as the <laughs> detective. So it's the same thing about EastEnders, it's really weird. So I'd gone up to play Gita when there was Sanjay and Gita and I never got the part and I was so upset at the time. And then I think, but then I would have never had Zainab. So just honestly, one bit of advice for anyone out there, let the universe guide you. Don't be upset when things don't happen for you. There is a bigger plan. Things always <laughs> so, work out in the end. They do. They always do. And, you know, there, there are worries, there are stresses, there are everything. But as much as it can bring you down, you have to have to stay positive in your mind. Now, I just wanted to say, I mean, um, when you go out to, to, to film for Death in Paradise, did you get to take any of your family with you or, or did they have to stay at home? Do you know what? Almost every other job in the world I've had to take, I've taken family. And this time around, my hiatus was in their Easter term. And I was like, oh, no. So, <laughs> and I couldn't stay out there because, you know, they sent us on because they were on hiatus. It's not like I could have taken them while I was working. So they got to miss out on that. But I have promise them that I will take them out to Guadalupe at some point because it is, it genuinely is paradise. I was going to say, it's, it's something that I think Death in Paradise is one of those programs that you need it because especially in this time, it just, it yeah. just brings the mood up and it's such a, like you say, an upbeat, cheery program. I mean, obviously there's death in it, but that, that's a small part of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a small part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a program we need at this sort of time in, in, in our lives, especially with everything that's going on. Yeah, do you know what I really was hoping when the call came through? I was hoping they were looking for a new detective and they, that she could be a female detective. And I was, I was secretly hoping that's what it was. Um, but regardless, I was just thrilled to be a part of it. But I think it needs a, a woman at the helm now. You, you know, I think we need a little bit of a change. I mean, that is the one thing in my career, Matthew. If you have any influence, please, <laughs> I would like to play a female detective in a really good, like, you know, drama series. That's my next big thing. <laughs> I think you, you and Sinetra Sarko, we should make it happen. The two of you is like Let's a duo. Let's do it. Let's do, uh, do you know, I also did, um, so I, um, you know Mark Elliott, right? So yes. Mark had written this really fun little sitcom um, that he'd brought all his friends together to be a part of. Um, and we were paid in, in drink, um, which was great. <laughs> uh, and it, uh, he actually partnered me up in his little sitcom with Catherine Kelly. Oh, okay. And I'd never met Catherine Kelly before. And so... And we just got on like a house on fire. We both said, right, 
when are we going to be the next Cagney and Lacey? Let's <laughs> do it. We want to do it. So I am determined that I will play a detective of some kind at some point. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We hope that's going to happen. Fingers crossed. A comedy detective <laughs> exactly. would be perfect for me. <laughs> now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I could talk to you forever. Um, oh, but just, just before we go, is there any messages you'd like to, to give to anyone who's listening in hospital um, or anyone who's watching online? Uh, yeah, I'd say, you know, ha having had to spend long periods of my life in hospital with my mum, um, yeah, just just keep, keep strong in the mind, you know, just every day try and find one little thing that amuses you, that keeps you happy, that just gives you some kind of focus that's not about what's keeping you in hospital. Um, and if that means, you know, just FaceTiming every day with people that you know that's just going to bring you up, um, do that find the one thing every day as hard as it is and and the only other thing i'd say is i wish you luck and i wish you health that's all i can wish people now my my new blessing is i wish people good health thank you so much nina it's been an absolute pleasure of course keep safe and uh, thank you again no worries take care